You're doing the therapies and you're putting in the time, but deep down you know that something just isn't clicking. Whether it's your child's meltdowns, their delays, or just overall disconnect, you can't really seem to move that needle in the right direction. And here's the truth that no one's really telling you. It's not necessarily about doing more, but it's more so a matter of building consistency and doing the right inputs on a consistent basis. And this is why we use something called the 334 method. So that means it's three minutes to regulate the nervous system, three minutes to activate the brain, and four minutes to integrate those changes into real life applications like focus and just overall adaptability. I'm Dr. Connor Bohr and I help kids with developmental delays, with autism, with brain injuries, and today I'm gonna to show you a step-by-step -step process on how to rewire your child's brain at home in just 10 minutes a day using some pretty simple tools that you'll probably have at home. So the first step is we need to regulate the brain, and this is something that a lot of people forget to do at home. They just kind of jump right into all of their home exercises, but if the brain is just stuck in a fight or flight state, you're gonna have a really hard time not only doing your therapy, but maximizing the overall benefit that you're gonna get from the therapies. So first things first, we have to figure out ways to just calm the body. So I recommend doing this in a low stimulation room, whether that's their bedroom or whether you have a more quiet room, a more sensory room that you're not gonna hear the dishwasher going off, you're not gonna hear the uh, washing machine, you're not gonna hear other kids running around. You wanna be in a nice, chill environment for this. Now, if your child's able to do some breathing exercises, this is something that's amazing. I understand understand that a lot of kids have, have trouble with doing stuff like this, but there's even different ways that you're able to put this stuff into action where one that I really like from a breathing standpoint is just get a straw, put a straw in the child's mouth and have them blow out the candles, blow cotton balls off the table, take big breaths in and blow it all out. You can get creative with a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna give you guys the foundations of it and then you can apply it to your child however you seem fit. Another really good one is rocking or swinging. If you have a sensory swing at home, that's a really good thing to just warm a child's body up. Another thing that's good is vibration. So a vibration plate is really good. If you have a vibration ball, you could put that over the child's hands, you could put it over their feet, you could put it over their cheeks. And a lot of this is gonna be dependent on the child and what their sensory needs are. So if you have questions with what you think would be best for this, be sure to ask your child's practitioner, their OT, their PT, whoever it might be, and they should have some pretty good recommendations on what the best impact sensory input should, should do well for your child. Now, the reason we do all of this is to regulate your child's brain. And remember, all of this stuff is warming up different areas. So we start at the lowest foundation of the neurodevelopment as possible, and we wanna grow from there. So like I said earlier, if a child's brain is stuck in fight or flight, you need to do things to help bring it out of it. And this is just one simple application you could do to do just that. So step two is we have to activate the brain and the brain thrives on activation, but not all activation is created equal. And that's something that's incredibly important to remember. So you have your five senses. These days we do a lot of auditory and visual stimulation, which is good, but is not nearly as powerful as some of your other types of stimulation. So the big two things that drive the brain is your muscular system, System, your proprioceptive system and your vestibular system. So one thing that we love doing when we're activating the brain is getting the body moving. Moving the body does a significant amount more than watching an iPad. So once the brain's calm, we can now light it up. So here's what you're gonna do to activate a child's brain. So we wanna activate the core and the muscular system. So some really simple ways to do this is by things like wheelbarrows and by crab walks and by jumping jacks, by jumping on a trampoline, by cross crawl exercises, those are great. Different balancing activities where the more we can activate the muscles, the muscles in turn are going to activate the brain more. So think about out how you're able to get the body moving from a gross motor standpoint. So the third and final step is when we start putting everything together and we wanna integrate all the regions of the brain. And this is where a lot of the therapeutic side of it comes in, it stacks on top of everything else. But we wanna put movement into more of a meaningful task. So we wanna use some of the physical activation and combine that with some cognitive activation. Here's what you're gonna do for this. And every child's definitely gonna be different in this regard, but the more you can add a motor movement, 
with a cognitive skill that's going to be significantly, significantly impactful for your child. So we call this dual tasking. So for example, if your child's working on math or just counting in general, we could have them balancing on one foot while having them count backwards or count by twos or by naming different animals or naming different colors. And this is where your creativity has to has to ignite a little bit depending on what your child skills are. Other things we could do is just simple problem solving skills. And this could be anything from games like Simon Says to different pattern games to different visual tracking games. And if you're able to stack that on top of some of your physical stuff, that's all for the better as well. So what we're essentially doing here is we're following that developmental blueprint by regulating the body, by activating the body, and then by integrating everything. And we want to figure out a way that this fits into our routine at a high level so we're able to do this on a consistent basis with our child. It's very good doing this in the morning but if there's also a time of the day where they're a little bit more dysregulated this might be a good thing to do with them as well. So here at our clinic we do a lot of high level integration a lot of high level exercises which is all really good but sometimes when we start implementing a home care routine with children and they're able to do it at a consistent level for some of the kids that may be responding a little bit slower or just need that extra push Push. Time and time again, consistency is going to beat motivation. And that's something that I say all the time, where if you're able to do a therapy for 10 minutes a day, five to seven days a week, something simple like this, that is going to significantly outweigh doing a big push one hour a day or whatever it might be. So I always say, and it's so important to understand this concept, but consistency is gonna beat motivation. And that's really true in every area of life, but especially true in the pediatric rehab journey. So here's your 10 minute routine, three minutes to regulate, three minutes to activate, and four minutes to integrate. I want to keep this as simple as I can for you guys because this is what brain training looks like. Sometimes it's not the sexiest thing in the world, but we want to figure out a routine that you're able to be consistent as possible, where you're able to remove the guesswork, where you're able to not get burnt out by trying to figure out what to do in the morning. And I think this methodology works very well for this. And I think if you're able to put this in a consistent routine with your child, not doing it just once or twice, but doing it over a consistent basis, you're gonna see some pretty cool changes with your children. So if this clicked with you, hit subscribe. We're gonna keep coming out with different brain training tips like this. And if you have any questions or things that you guys want us to hit on, please drop them below and I'll be sure to answer them.